Hello everyone, welcome back to my all-country tour in Microsoft Flight Sim, where I flew through all the countries of the world using the F-111 by Aviasim HD slash GKS, and I did so during Twitch live streams, and if you are watching this within three months of the original live streams, you might be able to watch the full versions on Twitch, though this is the condensed version that will make it easier to follow. And so I'm flying from Tokyo to Hong Kong. This is the eighth flight in the series out of 25. And here I am taking off in the F-111, a little bit lopsided there. The reason that there's no audio from the game during these videos is because I was listening to Apollo 15 audio during some of these flights and otherwise music and they would be combined with the sound from the game, unfortunately, on that track. And so it's a little bit complicated to have that and my narration going on at the same time. So sorry about that. Uh, but yes, so we won't have the engine sounds. But we do have Mount Fuji in the background as I climb with the F-111 uh, to ultimately 65,000 feet. And uh, here I am breaking the sound barrier. Uh, that always entails a lot of drag as we go through the transonic speeds. And here I am crossing the west coast of Japan at Fukui and headed to South Korea. And now after South Korea, we will go to North Korea. They participated in the Olympics after all, and they are a country, and I'm going through all countries. Uh, you'll notice the chat on the side there. Uh, please ignore that because there's no context. Uh, that is because I did this during Twitch live streams, and so... They'll be hanging out there. Originally, I was planning to post the entire videos to YouTube, but I decided not to do that because I don't think anybody would be interested in three to four hour videos. Well, it seemed like people weren't interested in three to four hour videos, so I've got this condensed version. Here I am flying over Seoul there, trying to get the best view possible. And yeah, well, one of the downsides of flying this fast and high is we don't get the best views, but uh, it does give us an overview of which areas of the world are well covered by the photo scenery and which areas are not so much. And here we are headed into North Korea. I, I doubt we have the crispest stuff for North Korea, uh, but actually there was a mod from flightsim.to that I added that added some buildings to Pyongyang, but I did not actually uh, get close enough to verify those buildings. Uh, didn't want to scare North Koreans too much, I guess. Uh, so here I am turning now. Uh, around a 180 degree, degree turn. I didn't want to fly over China just yet because we'll be flying through China on the next flight. And this video will contain flights 8, 9, 10, and 11. So I'll be keeping off the coast of China until the next flight where I'll be crossing over to Mongolia. That's unavoidable. We have to fly over Mongolia as well, of course. Glad to, in fact. And uh, here I am approaching Taiwan. Of course, we are going to fly over Taipei there. Uh, Clear skies over Taiwan this time. Oftentimes I've had uh, clouds blocking the way as far as seeing Taipei clearly, but Taipei was very clear there. And I had to turn towards Hong Kong. So uh, as far as Hong Kong being a country, well, it's a special administrative region. I'm counting it. It does have a separate Olympic team. So I decided that I would land at Hong Kong. Also, I've got special Hong Kong scenery, as you can see me descending into Hong Kong there. And so I decided to take advantage of that and land at Hong Kong, even though that made this flight sort of short. On average, I fly at about a thousand knots uh, per hour, a thousand nautical miles per hour. So that's including after you average the takeoff and landing times. So yeah, uh, it, that's the general pace. So this was a 2000 nautical mile flight overall. And so it took about two hours. And here I am passing by Disneyland at Hong Kong, though all it has is the castle and then it doesn't have the rest of the stuff. It looks sort of weird having the castle right there. Uh, it really needs the supporting cast of the rest of Disneyland to make it make sense. But anyway, here I am landing at the main airport in Hong Kong. Uh, I also have a mod for this one, adding some buildings and the third runway. And so that was the touchdown. And I found a parking spot after that. And there were these two towers. I don't know if they're both supposed to be there or whether one's like the stock one and one's the uh, mile one. Maybe they're both supposed to be there. They do look different. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway, but we do have those two towers. And now having parked, I'll move on to the next flight, which is from Hong Kong to Kazakhstan. But there's a lot of stuff to go through in between. We are going to cross China diagonally like that hit uh, Mongolia, and then go down to Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, um, I think Uzbekistan, and also I decided to cover 
Afghanistan here instead of doing it later. So we'll also fly over Afghanistan, uh, just the northern part of it, in order to cover it. And so taking off from Hong Kong again, this being the ninth flight, and this one will be a much longer flight as we fly along the bridge between Hong Kong and Macau. This is 3,500 nautical miles, or about three and a half hours was the plan. Uh, the cruise speed is about 1,200 knots, and here we are approaching Macau. I can't resist flying by Macau Tower, and so that is what I do. We'll buzz Macau Tower here, and I also have the special uh, Sam Scene scenery for Macau, so I can enjoy that as well. And that probably introduces that bridge. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think so. So there's Macau Tower, and I buzz it, and then after that proceed through China. And one thing I didn't, I wasn't aware of is on takeoff I had lost connection to the internet, and unfortunately that turned off the, the Bing photo scenery stuff. And so as I crossed China, I wasn't aware that I wasn't getting the nicest scenery. So that sort of sucks, but I did cross that. You can tell we're getting sort of generic stuff going on here. It looks a lot more like FSX scenery than Flight Sim 2020. Pekka joined me for this flight, and you can see him in the distance there. Uh, the slog through China was fairly long, and so I decided on alternate sort of in-flight activity, and that was GeoGuessr. And so here I am playing GeoGuessr here. Uh, this is partly at the uh, request or suggestion of Pekka, and so I was trying to figure out where I was in GeoGuessr, and then we reached Mongolia. Now, here, the, the textures were just too bad, and so then I realized that photo scenery was off, and so I turned it on, and all was much, 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 much better. And there we have Mongolia in its proper sort of look, and thank goodness, because it's, it's really good flying over Mongolia. Not, not an unpleasant place to fly over. So there's Pekka in the background there. And after Mongolia, I head across, I clipped over uh, part of China and then flew over Kyrgyzstan, which sort of looks like this. Uh, lots of, lots of snow-capped mountains. Unfortunately, the photo scenery won't be super, super great over here, but it'll still be better than the generic scenery. As you saw in the cockpit, I was holding just above Mach 2 as we entered Kyrgyzstan and the setting was 65,000, though that varies depending on ambient conditions. And here's more of Kyrgyzstan and approaching the border with Tajikistan. And after Tajikistan, I head into Afghanistan and then we'll cross Tajikistan again in order to get to Uzbekistan. We're only really clipping a little bit of Uzbekistan that sort of pokes north over Tajikistan, but that part has Tashkent, which is a really big city in Uzbekistan anyway, so probably best to fly over that. So here is Afghanistan. Uh, the snowy stuff sort of dries out and we get a uh, drier landscape after that. And just flying over the northernmost part of this along the border and then turning around Kunduz there. And then there's this road that goes up from Kunduz to Dushanbe and then up to Tashkent and basically I was following that. So big turn, uh, the plane turns with uh, U-turn uh, diameter or space of 80 nautical miles, so a radius of 40 nautical miles. Uh, so yeah, it takes a while sometimes. So this is Dushanbe that we're flying over that's in Tajikistan. And as we go over it, the Sim tries to straighten out the textures a little bit, and then Tashkent in Uzbekistan. So those countries are covered, and I head up into Kazakhstan. And this is crossing the border into Kazakhstan. You can see Uzbekistan back there. And we'll be crossing Uzbekistan again on the next flight in order to get to Turkmenistan and into Iran. And so the descent is into Baikonur. There's the Baikonur Cosmodrome, where uh, Soviet launches had happened and Russian launches do happen. I fly over the Soyuz pad, well not directly over, alongside the Soyuz pads and then the Energia pads, the leftover, which these are not used anymore, but and the scenery isn't great here, but you know, you can tell stuff is happening over here. And then landing at the airport where all the stuff gets delivered, like the in the old days they would bring the big rocket parts in here. 
including the Energia tank, you know, was delivered by plane. And unfortunately it has no actual parking, so I just take a spot off to the side here and leave it at that. Next flight is from Kazakhstan to Istanbul in Turkey, and we will go through the Caucasus, and so the countries there, and also passing through Iran. So, taking off here, I didn't really think I needed the external tanks anymore, and in the future I'll be leaning towards not needing the external tanks at all, just putting tanks in the weapons bay, which uh, has less drag involved and taking off from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan and down into Uzbekistan. Now, Tashkent, the big city in Uzbekistan, is off to the east and we already flew over it, so the part of Uzbekistan over here isn't particularly as populated as far as I can tell. Uh, Kazakhstan looking good there, but unfortunately because of the lighting you can tell I'm taking off at dawn and this flight occurred on August 2nd, by the way, just for the record. Uh, because of the lighting conditions, we didn't really get the greatest look at the landscape. You know, it's sort of hazy in a way. But yeah, I don't know how much they actually covered this particular part of Uzbekistan. So yeah, hopefully we're, we're, we weren't missing too much as an audience. Looking for the interesting spots. Interesting name, though, on Sky for Sim there. That is a heck of a name. I have no idea how to pronounce that. <laughs> so... It's wonderful when a place name stretches right across the screen, right? Anyway, uh, so down into Turkmenistan now. But again, the haziness because of the lighting conditions means that we don't really have the best scope of the landscape. So, yeah. Anyway, on into Iran, down on the south coast of the Caspian Sea. The morning had progressed a bit by the time we got to Iran, so the view of the terrain was much better and we can see the rather mountainous portion of the northern part of Iran and Tehran rather than being on the coast with the Caspian Sea is actually on the opposite side of the mountains uh, perhaps benefiting from some uh, water flowing down from the mountains as you can see there's Tehran there and just sort of lightly pass by not wanting to alarm anybody and then proceeding onward to the Caucasus starting with Azerbaijan. The big city in Azerbaijan is Baku, but I didn't get a particularly good look at that because I needed to turn left uh, towards the west in order to get to Armenia and Georgia and all. Uh, so we got this part of the coast of Azerbaijan, but you can see where Baku is. And yeah, didn't quite get a good sighting of that. And I had to turn west, so no luck there. Saw this reservoir in Azerbaijan and then proceeded on to Armenia. I don't know much about the geography of Armenia, but there was the Seven National Park. And pretty much as soon as I got into Armenia, I had to figure out how to turn towards Georgia. So uh, here I'm covering a large part of Armenia in order to turn to Georgia in the north there. And this is a nice big turn for that. I promise that if I spy any interesting features on the landscape, we're certainly not seeing them there but that I will take a closer look with a slower plane some other time as we cross into Georgia. But yeah, right now the train, I, I double checked that the photo scenery was on this time and the train was just not looking particularly good. So it was photo scenery, but it wasn't very good photo scenery. As I made the turn towards the west coast of Georgia, towards Kobaleti, which is a place familiar to all DCS world players, I suppose, and then on into Turkey. And as we were going through Turkey, I decided to play more GeoGuessr, and in fact, I got one location in Turkey. And so this is a GeoGuessr location in Turkey that I did while flying over Turkey. Uh, there was a telltale sign, uh, very interesting, uh, but I didn't know exactly where in Turkey. My inside Turkey geography knowledge is not very good. I ended up 182 miles off there. But anyway, not bad, all things considered. I've done worse in Turkey before. And here I am descending into Istanbul. So, yes, a sprawling city. And still above Mach 1 there, uh, disturbing people as I do. Descending quickly and dramatically into Istanbul. And I tried to take in the sights, but, you know, uh, don't have quite as many sights at Istanbul as I would like to have. I think it deserves a lot more, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, 
photogrammetry, the whole business. I mean, Istanbul is a pretty important city. I'm not 100% sure that there's photogrammetry for it, but uh, it could sure use it. They could sure use it if there is. Anyway, on towards Hagia Sophia as I unfurled my wings there. And let's take a closer look at this particular area. I always forget which one exactly is Hagia Sophia. I would tend towards the larger one, but I'm not 100% sure. Wouldn't put it past somebody building another mosque like right next to Hagia Sophia and making it bigger. So anyway, here, th this airport is actually, I think, added by uh, flightsim.to mod. It is there. It is the real new airport in Istanbul. I don't think the game had it because Pekka said he didn't see it. So yeah. But uh, another thing that they could add is the actual new international airport at Istanbul, which has been open for a little bit now. But anyway, the mod did do it pretty well, and it's a freeware mod. I did not pay especially for a version of Istanbul. It could be that Pekka had not downloaded one update or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, this is pretty fancy if it's freeware. So if it is freeware, I certainly thank the person who made it. I wish I had recalled exactly who it was, but it could also be a world update, I'm not sure. Anyway, next flight and the last one for this video, the LUN flight, is from Istanbul to Helsinki. And this is going through a whole lot of countries in this Eastern Europe, covering a whole lot of places, nearly 3,500 nautical miles, lots of twists and turns, and actually very ill-advised turns. Because when you're plotting on the map, all the turns are like done instantaneously. Like It's like Kerbal Space Program where all the maneuvers are done instantaneously. That's not something that happens with this plane. It takes a long time to turn. And so as a result, the ultimate flight path is going to be a little bit different than what I plotted. Uh, I was making turns that this simply could not make. Uh, anyway, first headed towards Athens, uh, leaving Istanbul there. Very scenic. It's, it looks good from this height, that's for sure. Uh, and here, approaching Athens, airport carefully placed on the opposite side of the mountains from the main city there. Uh, and turning. Nice big wide turn. And then I decided to fly by Mount Olympus. And you'll be out of zooming into it there. It doesn't look all that impressive, to be honest. But, you know, it was the Olympics, so flying by Mount Olympus is appropriate, but it's, it's a sort of flat-topped one. Uh, I'm sure uh, at some point it probably was peakier, but it isn't right now. And here flying around Sofia in Bulgaria, making a turn towards... I was trying to turn towards North Macedonia, but there's no way I'm making that. Uh, and I wasn't planning to go into Serbia yet until closer to Belgrade, but I decided to co cover Serbia here. And so there won't be a Belgrade side to this. This is where we fly over Serbia and on into Kosovo. And, or I think it was Kosovo and then North Macedonia, or did we go through Ma North Macedonia and then Kosovo? Okay, yeah, Kosovo first. And so off in the distance is Pristina. And then, so into Kosovo and down into North Macedonia, uh, the Balkans. So here, uh, North Macedonia now. And then once in North Macedonia, I had to do a turn to Albania. And the thing about this is this plane's U-turn radius, and we have to do a full U-turn. We have to go north now after going south, is 80 nautical miles or about the width of Albania. <laughs> so uh, I was trying very much to not encounter the Adriatic Sea. I wanted to try and make the turn over land, and we just sort of barely had an Albanian width uh, to do that with. But uh, yeah, you can see the struggle here. This is just the same continuous turn as we fly over Albania here, and then head north to Montenegro. Still turning. Some nice cities here in Albania, though. And finally, Montenegro. So that's the border. And of course, in the view, we're just seeing Montenegro, probably the larger part of Montenegro, maybe all of it in the view there. And proceeding on into Bosnia and Herzegovina, passing by the city of Sarajevo, which the flight sim sort of tries to give me different textures for, for as I approach. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know which one would be better. The the original at least fit more with the landscape, but maybe eventually if it had given me all the bits, then it would have fit in properly. But on into Croatia, the northern part of Croatia, uh, not the coast of Croatia, but in Croatia, turning towards Slovenia, of course. All these, I mean, most of this particular flight was turning. It really was. And that was somewhat annoying to me but that's that's how it ended up being plotted so yes croatia but on into slovenia every pass through a country ended up being planning for the course into the next country i somehow felt like i wasn't giving the countries their proper due by flying like this but anyway uh, on into austria after we get into slovenia and trying to fly over vienna of course so nice big turn again as we cross into Austria. The Alps don't look particularly daunting at this site. And then there is Vienna, though the map really didn't want to tell me that. Uh, the map wouldn't give me any version of the city of Vienna there. So anyway, there's the Danube. It also didn't want to give me the name of the river. So yep, and it relied on me to figure that out for myself. And as we turned, I accidentally went into Slovakia. I was supposed to do Slovakia after Hungary, but we did see Bratislava first. We will still go over Slovakia on our way into Czechia, but first on into Hungary and towards Budapest. And Budapest is in front of us, also on the Danube, of course. And there is the city. Uh, at this site, not the best rendition, but I know they have a lot of sites at Budapest and a lot of stuff going on there. I'm sure if I got closer to it, it'd look a lot better. Uh, actually, starting around here, the flight got more and more laggy because the sim was less and less happy with me flying over all these cities with a lot of scenery there because the Eastern European series, they, they got an update and all the Eastern European cities got a lot more of these points of interest and I don't know exactly how the rendering works, but the sim was not happy with me flying over these. I did a lot of flights around the world before, and here as we've passed over Czechia, over Prague, and then on into Poland, the southern part of Poland by Krakow. Um, yeah, I don't know how it all works, but the earlier flights were pretty smooth by comparison to this one. This one got choppier and choppier as I went along. And uh, from Poland, I went into Romania, uh, uh, crossing over Slovakia again, and then crossing Romania, I went to Moldova. So there's just an account of all the countries. It is basically, I am producing evidence that I did this flight. Uh, again, uh, for a little while, you'll be able to see the full things in Twitch to verify that I actually did the whole things as we turn from Moldova into Ukraine uh, without, you know, crashing or anything. I did it. I did it. I swear. Uh, but... Eventually those videos on Twitch are going to go away and I'm not going to upload the huge files over to YouTube if people aren't that interested. So it'll just be these shorter videos to act as my proof of flight, if you will. As we passed by Kiev and on to, into Belarus. Belarus did not participate in the Olympics, but it's still a country, so I flew through it. Probably would have to anyway to get to Lithuania. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, going through Belarus there and by Vilnius in Lithuania and on to Latvia and actually by the time I got to the border with Latvia I was preparing for descent and so here I'm starting to go down and it's a long process with this plane to go down from 65,000 feet and so flying by Riga making a nice big turn towards Estonia and Tallinn and then passing by Tallinn in due course uh, now lower than before, so a slightly better sighting of Tallinn than some of the other cities, and then on into Helsinki. Knowing what I know now about the range of the plane, I would have plotted all the flights a little bit differently. It has a lot more range just with the weapons bay fuel uh, than I had expected, but originally I had plotted the flights based on its stated range, which was 3,500 nautical miles, and so going with that, that's why this uh, flight was plotted like this and here I am landing at Vanta in Helsinki uh, as far as looking at Helsinki in greater detail I decided to do that on the way out rather than the way in and I was quite tired when landing here um, 
the Flight 10 and Flight 11 were both on the same day on August 2nd, and here I am setting down at Vanta. So there we have it. Having landed at Helsinki, I'll wrap it up here. This has been Flights 8 through 11 of my All Country Tour, and with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.